This mob beat a university student to death in Pakistan for something he posted on Facebook. The victim, Mashal Khan, was a 23-year-old studying journalism at Abdul Wali Khan University in Mardan. A difference in opinion cost him his life. The night before he was murdered, Khan and two other students got into a heated debate over religion with some classmates. They were incensed over content that Khan had posted on Facebook and alleged that it was critical of Islam. They accused him of committing blasphemy, a charge that is punishable by death in Pakistan. They were overcome with such a sense of righteousness that even before Khan could be arrested or tried, they took the law into their own hands. The day after this argument, hundreds of students broke down the door to his dorm room, stripped him naked, dragged him outside and murdered him in broad daylight. This isn't an isolated incident. Vigilante mobs have a history of literally getting away with murder in the guise of protecting religion in Pakistan. It is, of course, not the first time that an alleged blasphemer has been lynched by mob. That has happened in Pakistan in the past. But what is more alarming is that this has not been done by some illiterate villagers in the far-flung areas of Pakistan. This has happened right in the heart of a university. And we are talking about university students who only 2% of Pakistanis get this privilege. So we are talking about the future enlightened or the so-called enlightened minds of Pakistan who are supposed to steer Pakistan out of these troubles and take us to brighter futures. And if this is the moral bankruptcy of our future mind, then that is very alarming. It is alarming. An estimated 1,274 people have been charged under the blasphemy laws of Pakistan in the past 30 years. A majority of those charged were Muslims, even though the law has been used to silence religious minorities and settle personal disputes. At least 62 people accused of committing blasphemy have been murdered before their respective trials were finished. And activists, lawyers, and politicians who have openly opposed the misuse of the law have been threatened and even assassinated. But to understand any of this, we have to take a look at the history of the blasphemy laws in Pakistan. They can actually be traced back to Christian Europe as early as the 1500s, when they were used by the church to stifle dissent and to enforce the church's authority. They were then exported to Muslim-majority countries like Pakistan through British imperialism as a means to protect all religions. The law was amended in 1987 under the military rule of General Ziaul Haq, who is best known for transforming Pakistan into an Islamic state, introducing the use of Islamic jurisprudence in legal cases, removing secular narratives from textbooks, and adding strict punishments for criminal offenses, among other such sweeping moves. Ziaul Haq changed the scope of the law to protect Islam alone, leaving minorities and free thinkers at the mercy of the Muslim majority. The death penalty, Article 295C, was also added, which was awarded only after the accused was proven guilty through trial. The idea was to discourage false accusations and vigilante-imposed justice, leaving the fate of the accused to the courts. But it didn't work out that way. Instead, few vigilantes were deterred. They were even emboldened by the fact that few alleged blasphemers were found guilty and that those who had falsely accused them went largely unpunished. Let's backtrack for a second to learn how the state of Pakistan defines blasphemy. Any person who allegedly defames the Prophet Muhammad or desecrates the Quran can be reported to the police, which then carries out its own investigation. So far, only two cases have resulted in a death sentence, the latest being Taimur Raza. The 30-year-old was jailed and tried over allegations that he had used Facebook to make a derogatory remark about the Prophet Muhammad. The first was Asiya Bibi, a Christian woman who was convicted in 2010 after a local cleric registered a complaint that she had committed blasphemy based entirely on the witnesses of two women who worked with her. What was her crime? Drinking a cup of water from a well. But we'll get back to that. 
So why is such cold-blooded vigilantism becoming so prevalent in Pakistan? Vigilante mobs are taking the law into their own hands because the capacity and the willingness of the law enforcement agencies, especially the civilian police, is non-existent. 95 to 99% of them are false accusations. Generally, this law is being misused to settle scores. Pakistan ke andar jo hamare ulama ne ek fiza banayi hai, usme ek aise aadmi ki jaan lena jisne blasphemy ki unke khayal mein, ye ko bade heroism ka kaam hai. For Amnesty International, the blasphemy laws are a gross violation of human rights. And the trial process itself is filled with flaws and loopholes. According to its report, As Good As Dead, people are routinely tried based on oral testimonies of just a few witnesses. And evidence that is collected in most cases is usually scant. And sometimes, even the words uttered that amount to blasphemy in the eyes of the accusers are not disclosed. So authorities tiptoe around them for fear of being charged themselves for having repeated them. The accused are presumed guilty and left with a burden to prove their innocence instead of the other way around. And police, prosecuting authorities and even trial court judges face threats and intimidation. And they buckle under this pressure to preserve their own security and relevancy. Asiya Bibi's accuser said she had committed blasphemy because after working in the field under the scorching sun, she had stopped for a drink of water at a well that belonged to Muslim women. They reported her to a local cleric saying that she had offended the Prophet Muhammad in an argument that had ensued. But the allegation had deeper roots. Asiya Bibi was in an ongoing property dispute with one of her accusers. And the governor who spoke up for her on television was shot to death by his own bodyguard, Mumtaz Qadri. Pakistan was glorified in Pakistan, so a man who thought that the blood of the blood Qadri was sentenced to death and hanged in March 2016. You can kill a man though, but you can't kill an ideology. This was Qadri's funeral. And this was the funeral of the university student we first told you about, Mashal Khan, where the cleric refused to perform his last rites. Local clergymen were using, misusing loudspeaker throughout the night restraining people not to go and attend the funeral. Where was the deputy commissioner at that time? Where was the provincial government? This murder took place in presence of armed policemen. Why didn't they open the fire? There was an FIR registered by Mashal Khan against some local influential people who were threatening him. The police did not take any action. In fact, Mashal Khan was proven innocent of his charges. सबसे पहले हमारी सोसाइटी जिम्मेदार है कि जब मुल्ला या कोई भी इमाम मिंबर पर बैठकर जुमे के दिन या कि मस्जिद में किसी भी दिन बैठकर हमें इंटॉलरेंस का सबक सिखाया जाता है तो हमसे हम उनसे सवाल क्यों नहीं करते हम उनको रिबटल्स क्यों नहीं देते कि जी आप जो हमें मैसेज पहुंचा रहे हैं ये इस्लाम का मैसेज नहीं है हाउ मेनी मशाल खान्स विल इट टेक फॉर पाकिस्तान टू स्टॉप द मिसयूज ऑफ द लॉ to strengthen its trial process and to create greater public awareness about the stance of Islam on taking the life of another human being.